Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the Nerds and Jesus podcast. Welcome. My name is Mary Howell. I am a Christian and a worship leader who happens to also be a huge nerd, according to myself, all of my friends, family, and coworkers. And recently, I've been wanting to discuss how Christian nerds are to navigate living in the secular world, how we are to be a light in the darkness while also nerding out on all types of fandoms pop culture has to offer. Today, we will be asking and answering the question Can Christians read Harry Potter? But I am not on this podcast alone. I am joined this week again by my wonderful bestie and nerd, Desiree Manier, and also joined by my other bestie, an avid book reader, and maybe one one of the biggest Harry Potter nerd I've met, question mark. Haley Craig, Haley and Des, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Happy to be here. I really tried on in this intro, guys. <laughs> I appreciate it. I wrote it just right now. I like that you called me a book nerd. <laughs> <laughs> because that's how, like, when I see Haley, I think, wow, she reads a lot of books. <laughs> and just like a hundred a year. <laughs> yeah. No biggie. <laughs> my my last guest in um, my last episode, Cole um it has thousands of books like it's crazy and he so has a library has a library literally yeah. i dream of that one day and uh anyway so I, every time i think of like my two book nerds it's you and then my friend cole too i literally have my kindle in my purse right now in case we had <laughs> downtime between this and my next thing oh <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so this is so fun because all three of us we hang out a lot along with some of our other friends so it's always fun to have my besties on this podcast and thanks for joining in i know you said you're not going to listen to this episode never never <laughs> i will not be listening to the sound of my voice for an unknown amount of time <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> but yeah so so thankful y'all back and des back again this is probably your third episode now yeah so fun things it's so fun des was on the other episodes when we talked about the D D movie and about D D. And now we're talking Harry Potter. So fun things. Um, but before we get into that, I know, Des, I've already asked you this question, but if you want to summarize again a little bit of your story. So um, what I always ask my guests is two questions, like how long have y'all been a Christian? And then you're welcome to um, share a little bit of your story. And the second question, I'll let you all know after you answered the first question. So take it away. Yeah. So I have been a Christian since 20... 20- 2008 it was it's 2008 um a friend of mine a really good friend of mine had passed away and actually had a come to jesus moment with jesus at his wake and um got down on my knees and dedicated my life to the lord and came home jumped on my grandpa's lap hugged him and said hey i i was saved today and he was like it's about time so i mean from there i went to college in 2010 and um didn't really start fully dedicating myself to to the Lord until like about 2012. And then ever since then, it's just been a full sale. I love hearing your story every time. Um, it's always like whenever you know someone and you love them so much, you're like, you hear everyone's like their story of how they came to Christ. It's just like, <sighs> so it's great. <laughs> but thanks for sharing. Yeah. All right. Haley. I um, was lucky enough to be born into a family of people that were Christians, went to church. So I was raised in the church um, from literal infancy until now, thankfully. But as far as when my faith kind of became my own and I was baptized, that was um, January 2009, my freshman year of high school is when I felt that I was finally mature enough and ready to make it my own and was baptized on a Saturday night because the idea of waiting until Sunday morning and doing it in front of the whole congregation <laughs> made me nervous. So we did it the night before. Um, but it was really cool. I remember just having a realization that like, why am I not baptized? Of course I know right from wrong and that I know that I want to follow Jesus my whole life. So we called out the preacher that night and I got baptized and it was great. I was there with my family and my best friend at the time and then I think college is when it kind of became like a second level of faith, just because growing up in church, it was just like a, my parents were going to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, you got in the car, you know, rode together as a family. But it was only in college when I was suddenly like on my own a bit more that it was like, oh, I have to actively choose to still do these steps. And so it was sweet. It was kind of like whenever my faith got to become just mine and not just my family's faith. It's good. It's great. And yeah. then I met you guys. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. We all met. What year was this? It was 2013 was for me. Yeah. Des, I met you in 2012, but I feel like we didn't all start hanging out until 2013. Yeah, I met we you guys sophomore college. year. Yeah. We were all part of a crew, which is, it used to be called Campus Crusades for Christ, but now I think they're just called crew. But um, but yeah, we met on campus and we've been besties ever since. So that's, wait, 10 years? Yeah. yeah 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. Okay. You guys. <laughs> Oh my longest gosh. running relationship. I know we we've <laughs> all like have grown up together pretty much now. Where we've seen um our, uh, each other. You know, I'm not married, but I've seen Des. We've seen you get married, and Haley get you married, and Des now you have a baby. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But it's really cool to see just all of us grown up and then we all still hang out and watch Hunger Games together like we did last night. We all are watching. Um, we always choose like a certain, I guess, movie series, movie to, series to watch. We did the Toll Twilight series, um, charcuterie board, the whole the whole works and for every movie. And of course, you know, and next is Hunger Games. And we're trying to figure out what the next one is after that. So if you all have recommendations. Go ahead and let me know. And second question is how big of a nerd are you? And if you can choose your favorite fandom ever, which we probably on this episode, which I probably have an idea of what that is. But, you know, maybe your top two fandoms that you know all about or that you're so excited about. Okay. So, I mean, the obvious one is Harry Potter. I mean, clearly is, I mean, I grew up with it. It's like the biggest thing. It That was what like made me just a nerd at heart because I, I used to not read a lot and Harry Potter was like one of the first books that I actually picked up and really dove into and really just fell in love with the idea of reading. Um, I'd have to say, I mean, love, love anime, love like any kind of like anything like that. Um, Naruto, you know, obvi those obvious things. Um, Haley recently got me into a, another book series. I mean, that I just fell in love with as well. Yeah. But other than that, like, yeah, like Harry Potter is probably like the main, if we're, if we're talking books, that's like the main thing that yeah. got me into being a nerd and an avid reader. So, yeah. And I remember you always watching, it was between those two. And then when we were roommates, you were always watching anime and that's like one of, and I, we've talked about anime in another episode, but that's like one of the, the nerd part of anime that I'm not, really that familiar with and i've tried to get into it but i'm so intimidated because there's so much part of that world that that's like you're diving into it you know it's it's like as if you're you've never been a marvel fan all of a sudden you want to like learn about marvel you can't i mean you're diving into it 100 percent um but yeah very cool what about you Haley? harry potter is definitely my number one has been since fourth grade whenever they announced that the books the movies were coming out my dad was like i'll only take you if you read the books first so i dove in and i read the books first and then i wanted to be hermione granger yeah um <laughs> and then i think second it's always a mix between fantasy and dystopian so i've gone back and mm. forth between like dystopian man i know i was obsessed and so it's like hunger games the uglies by scott westerfield divergent was obsessed with all of those and then fantasy series like sj mass's book series mm. uh, quarter thorns and roses and throne of glass um something in there yeah. always always magic involved somewhere <laughs> i feel like if there's ever if you ever like wanted to get into a new book series that's in the similar genre of like Lord of the Rings or fantasy, like go ahead and just like, like ask Haley because that's yeah. the person to really ask of like, Hey, what book should I read next? And, uh, but she's, cause she's read all of them millions of times. And so it's not just once she reads them through <laughs> literally yesterday, we watched the second hunger games movie. She's like, Oh yeah, I just read this the other day. I was like, what do you mean? You just read this the other day. I was thinking <laughs> it's only three books. It only took me two days. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I've read that series since high school. And like, we always, we Same. have a whole, yeah. And so we were, we were joking yesterday that I had no idea that Katniss was an unreliable narrator and I believed everything she said. So I was just a very against PETA for a hot minute. <laughs> and so they, they, they judged me very quickly on that. I got a little defensive of PETA. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but what about Gabe? <laughs> but anyway, we don't talk about them. Gail. Oh, Gail. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know their names enough to remember. I was gonna let that slide, but <laughs> no, it's, I'm leaving it in this episode. It's happening. The si no, my thing was a silence. It was a silence for me. Oh my gosh! Like who's, who's Gabe? I don't even know who so Gabe funny. is. Oh my gosh! Anyway, Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Yes. So, um, what is y'all's history? With Harry Potter like when was like obviously you just said a little bit of your initial um introduction to Harry Potter but you know what was your first reaction your feeling like when you started getting into the books or reading the movies like where did it take you mentally oh my gosh this is like the best escape in the entire world it's like um her words and how she like created the world is so vivid that you just get sucked into it and it's like a, f a movie going on in your head and so to see the movies come to life like from page to like actual like film was just 
the best thing in the whole world. It, the only way to describe it was magic. It was just magical. Like I felt something when I read these books. Like I, 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 like you said, like wanted to be Hermione Granger. Like I understood the, the level of like commitment to like the drive that she had, like Ron, the, the goofiness that he had, like it, it was just, it was just magic. Yeah. Like I mentioned fourth grade. So I was nine years old whenever the first film came out. And so it was seeing the like trailers and movie posters for it. So I was always picturing, you know, that trio as mm -hmm. the characters in my head when I was reading the book series, but I was just a few years younger than the characters themselves. So I felt like I was going on this journey with them and yeah. reading the books as the movies came out. I was in high school when the last one came out, you know, it was at the midnight premiere, fully dressed up. My dad had handmade us wands for me and all of my friends. So, <laughs> so I felt like it was literally my entire childhood was yes. growing up with these characters and the world that she created for us. Yeah. I, I said this in the last Harry Potter episode with JT and Cole that like, I wish I didn't grow up with it because that just wasn't really a thing for us. Um, I think culture wise as well, but man, I, I remember seeing all my friends going through all the, all the emotions of whenever a new book came out and they'd read it. And I wanted to get into it. I was like, Oh, maybe when, maybe in college. And then why don't know when I read it in college? I like, read all of them so quickly it was insane and immediately went to harry potter world. like we're going to harry potter world this is happening part of the books and you know and part of the question that we're asking you know today that we're answering and asking is can christians read harry potter and i know obviously we're christians so yes we have read harry potter but for those i really want us to discuss at least for maybe folks who have always been weary of maybe picking it up because that's just what they were told growing up because that was a lot of my history with it growing up was like hey I'm not allowed to read it you know and and my obviously um it was you know dependent on like my family's convictions which hey you know I'm I'm underneath my family underneath my parents you know and whatever they want me to you know consume or whatever like I respected that in high school and as I got older so once I turned 18 I was like all right I'm going to read them you know <laughs> but you know um but that's a lot of the questions since I know I've I've read them all through them once. I've read them once. I've read, seen the movies millions of times now. But how many times have y'all read the books? I'm just curious. A lot. A lot, a lot. Yeah. You I've, remember, I've read the book series probably about seven times. And then I've listened to it about three times. Yeah. And then I I own the book in e-files, audio files, hardcover, the new um, animated one, like the illustrated ones. And then I'm collecting the new pop-out series ones. <sighs> That is cool. I have the OG. That's like, I'm not advanced in like all of the... I just have the audiobooks, the, yeah. Yeah, the audiobooks and everything. I just have like my OG books and I have like everything from like the the uh, Tales of the Beatles bar and like all of those things. It's it's really fun. I've, I've probably say about seven or eight times in my lifetime. I of, think like, my favorite read through was the summer that I was in the UK doing a mission trip there. And so I'm like laying in bed each night reading the Harry Potter series and I would come across like a city name and I'm like, I'm 10 miles from there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with this book series, you know, Obviously, uh, w one thing that people would always be weary of, you know, as Christians, maybe um, are weary of it is the word magic's in it. Right. So we automatically associate a lot of times in the real world. Magic is not a great thing. You know, obviously, it's um, there, are, there are people who go into at least more, a lot of that dark side um, here in the real world, you know, of messing with that. And it's usually demonic. It's usually um on that side of the supernatural and something that we always like, that's not something we ever want to dive into and stuff like that. And so how would we best, I, I want, I mean, this is also me also asking the question, you know, like how can we navigate as Christians diving into a world, especially, I mean, it's not just Harry Potter magic. I feel like is in a lot of fantasy that we read. It's in Lord of the Rings. It's in, and it's a lot, it's a lot of different, you know, it's not just Harry Potter really, obviously Harry Potter, because, witch and wizard is in you know in this book series and so we immediately associate you know magic with uh, witches and wizards so yeah so how how, would, how do we navigate that um that's a very good question so i i, I think separating yourself from like that and understanding that that's not real that that is just pretend that's imagination that's just for that because the, like you said there is people who are who dabble in witchcraft and, and being Wiccans and things like that in the real world, which are 
duly to demonic um, things. And so it's just drawing a line of like, okay, so just because they have, they say that these, these like spells and like they cast these things in the, in the books and in the movies, those are not real. I will not go anywhere near things like real spells or mm-hmm. real things like that. You have to have accountability for yourself. Like you have to be comfortable with what you're doing. So if you're comfortable with reading the books and you're comfortable with watching the movies, that's great, but don't dive too far too deep and get too dark. Mm-hmm. Um, I, my grandpa was a pastor, my like very sh- like, you know, strict in their, in their face. My grandpa was a little bit more open to the idea when I started reading the Harry Potter books. So when the first Harry Potter came out, um, I sat him down and I was like, let's watch this together. And like, you can decide whether or not I should be reading this or not, if it's like good for me or not. And so he watched the the first Harry Potter on VHS with me in our living room. Mm -hmm. And afterward he was like, okay, this is good. Um, just, you know, have boundaries. And like, he explained to me what boundaries were and he explained to me like what it, like what it looks like when you go too far. And in the simplest terms as like a a fourth grader could, you know, understand. And then from there, like, I've always just kind of had that ingrained in my head. Like, okay. Like it's, it's great to be a nerd and to like, to love the, the, the world of Harry Potter and all that stuff, but to have like a, yeah. a boundary that yeah. you don't cross. Yeah. I'm very much in agreement. I think my answer to that has always been simple. It's just, if you have understanding of what is fact and what is fiction, then that's kind of your answer to mm-hmm. me. It's always been that simple of, I know that it's not real, you know, right. like I know that this is a, a work of fiction that she created while sitting on a train dreaming up some fictional characters and like their impact on me has been real like yeah. the, that friendship is important where you can show bravery where you yeah. can find help in unexpected places and that's what I felt was majority of the books like yes it had you know magic in it but I felt like that was never the center point ever really in the books obviously there's a part of the world so it is um so what a, yeah what do y'all what, as far as like friendship what you were saying like in the Harry Potter books, you know, we we take say we take magic away. What would you how would you describe this book series is about? I think the core value to me has always been the importance of friendship, like the importance of friendship, just because that's so many of the time. Like there's so many of the times where he would not have made it without Ron and Hermione there for them. But mm-hmm. I think there's just truly so many important lessons like the times where loyalty is important and how it's okay to go to your parents for help. And because I I feel like it's so often that adults are like the villains of the story, you know, like, Mm -hmm. and so seeing healthy relationships with like the Weasley parents and even Draco going to his own parents for help whenever, you know, like his life isn't quite working out the way he thought it would be. And, you know, I don't know. I just think that friendship and just being able to trust those around you and, loyalty the growth that so many, a lot of these characters had i think that's what's so unique even obviously we're, we're talking about the books itself with the characters itself you know the movies too it's cool to see them grow up with as these characters we've seen them grow up on screen but with the books man seeing just how far harry's been how far ron's been and hermione and their journey through it all and all the trials that they had to deal with and but just the people that surrounded themselves and, you know, even, you know, they created a family where, you know, they weren't all blood related, but they created that family too. And I think that's like really cool. I don't know if y'all had any experience with that. Oh yeah. Um, like you guys are my family. Like I've known you for like 10 going on affinity, you know? So it's like, I mean, you don't always, you know, get the best family sometimes like, you know, born into the best families. But I do a hundred percent agree that like you can like fall in with like a family that you choose. And so it's, um, that book taught me so much. That whole series taught me so much. And I grew up with that series, like an an understanding, like once I graduated high school that, you know, like the beginning of like finding like who you are and like all that stuff and the courage. And I agree. I think friendships and family coincide, like when it comes to like the main characters, because I mean, they ended up marrying like into the, the Weasley family regardless. I mean, Harry and Hermione did. So they, I mean, they, not only were they family before they were married into it, but then they were officially in-laws. So it was just like, 
you know, spoiler, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Snape kills Dumbledore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Someone actually ruined that for me. No. <laughs> yes. But it was like, I, I'm the type of person who who will still read the books or still watch the movies regardless. But I was a little, but I was, yeah. I was a little salty. <laughs> I think what I wish, I mean, they, they showed this in like a extra deleted scene, you know, in the movies, but in the books, just even the growth of the Dursleys at the very, very end, you know, their concern for Harry at the end. Like even that, I was like, what? When I read that part, I was like, you, this is a total turn of events. But I guess kind of seeing it come in when they were leaving and. I don't it was, know. It was a deleted scene too in the extras. They had like a, a small clip of like Dudley saying like, well, what about Harry? Like, isn't he coming with us? And they were, the Dursleys were like, no, he has to stay behind. And then they did like this whole like small clip that obviously got cut out of the, the part one. But I mean, it was just nice to see that. Other random question, because we didn't talk about it at the beginning. I realized what, uh, which Hogwarts house are you? Ravenclaw. <laughs> Ravenclaw. Gryffindor. Or Ravenclaw also. But Ravenclaw makes a lot of sense for you. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, I was like, man, I feel like I would be Hufflepuff, but every single time I'm taking the test, it's always Ravenclaw. And I think it's because I have a lot of hobbies and I dive into like all those hobbies in detail and figure those out. So maybe that's what it is. Um, and maybe astronomy. So I was like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> um, and so one of the questions also, um, I honestly just like literally pulled up questions of, it says 10 life questions to consider after reading Harry Potter. And I think they're so fun. I feel like we should answer them. Okay. So the first one was, <laughs> it's totally sidetracking. First one was a Hogwarts question, which, or which uh, house you're in. Second one is, do you avoid talking about things you fear? Just how they always refer to Voldemort as you know who. <laughs> Isn't that super interesting? Yes. Well, fear of the name increases it's fear of the thing, thing itself. itself. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, do you believe that you would be unaffected by a threat as long as you do not speak of it or think about it? You know, I think there might be some truth in that. Ignorance is bliss. I mean, yeah, there were honestly some times where it's like if I'm feeling nervous or anxious about something, especially when it's something that's out of my control, I genuinely just try not to think about it for a minute just because if there's nothing I can do about it in that moment, why would I want to spend all of my time spiraling about it? Yeah, I, I think it also just depends on like the situation at hand, because sometimes like you can avoid it and you can't just pretend it doesn't exist. Sometimes you actually have to kind of become a Gryffindor and just face it head on and just, you know, accept whatever it's going to be. Yeah, or, sometimes. you know, in my case, spiders, probably one of my biggest fears. Oh, my gosh. Every time I see the spider scene in Chamber of Secrets, I think of you, Des. I think of her. Like, when we watch Ron the movie, is my spirit animal sometimes, I think. <laughs> like, like <laughs> that's... Spider. I think when we, we had a Harry Potter movie marathon, like, a couple years ago, and when we watched that movie, like, I would pretend to, like, be a... Like, oh, my hand would be a spider all, like, does. And she's like... I would get goose pimples, like, all over goose my body. Pimples. Yeah, it's like, call them goose pimples, because they're bumps. Wrong. Yeah. Goose bumps. bumps. There's no pimples. Pimples? <laughs> they're pimples. They're goose Next pimples. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> No, but but anyway, back to that question, like Professor McGonagall, you know, from the final movie, she says, you might as well use it. He's going to try to kill you either, either way. So, yeah. Um, third question. What would you see in the mirror of, I can't pronounce the word. Ira said. Yeah, Ira said. What would you see in the mirror? And, you know, it's, a, it's an artifact, you know, we see in Sorcerer's Stone. So a person gazing into it would see their deepest desire vividly manifested. Super uh, questions. These are really big life questions. I think that is a big life I question. Think, um, for for me, my first one would probably be like my grandparents and my mom. Mm. Just like if they could see me now, oh, like sweet. and like their their grandson, their great grandson, their first one in the family, like how they would like interact with them and how they would. I think that that would be like the first thing that I would see, and then. Then after that, I don't know. I don't really look too far into that. I can't even. I've never thought about that. I've never thought about that. Like in a way, it's like similar to Harry Potter. Like when he's like seeing his parents, I guess. Mm -hmm. Just how they would 
<laughs> Watch mine. Like, mine's like Ron. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm head. I know. I'm like something I like. Am good. I a vain person? <laughs> because I don't think my answer is as wholesome as. Oh my my family. My, my family seeing well, me now. <laughs> I mean, I, I you know I miss them obviously. Yeah. I mean they're in heaven. So, but I, I would I would love to no, have sure. them see that. But I mean, if if I was gonna be vain and that, but I'd probably want to see me very like you know. I don't know. S- skinny again. <laughs> Or baby and and, <laughs> and birth control weight. I mean, just be real. <laughs> Man, I don't know what I would see. Oh goodness gracious! I think like I would see, my, like maybe like my future family. I guess, but like how would the mirror know? It's like <laughs> you know, but maybe like just having a family and like you know, I'm still young. Who your you know. husband's actually gonna look like, so you know who he is. Like I guess, before you yeah. meet him, just, just would that be awkward for you though? Like, know. if you saw him in the mirror and you're like, oh, that's who I'm supposed to marry. And then you meet him in real life. I mean, like, what, what do you say? Like, I literally oh, yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> I've seen you in the mirror. I'm <laughs> you know, it's just desire spelled backwards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't I've know that. Never I've never realized. thought about that. I think mine goes back to my inner Hermione Granger where I struggle sometimes to see my own value based on the success that I have. And mm. so I'm like, I would want to <laughs> see myself be successful in mm. what I'm not exactly sure but yeah. sometimes I find it easy to put my self-worth in what I've accomplished or what I can do for others mm-hmm. you know it's hard to like not compare yourself into this world where everyone's comparing themselves to each other and their successes and things like that so I get it fourth question <laughs> moving on how would a bogger torment you so, you know, we see in Prisoner of Azkaban, you know, Bogarts are described as shape-shifting entities capable of one and only one horrid trick. So they take form of whatever terrifies you the most. I feel like Des, you're a spider, right? It's not even just a spider. You know those spiders from Australia that are like the size of like a massive dude's hand? Mm-hmm. Like, ah, uh, the furry and they got the pincers and like, <laughs> I, yeah, no. I, that's a big no for me. Uh, no <laughs> mine is mrs relates to mrs weasley when she's at grimald place cleaning out the bogger in the closet in sirius's old house and it's just flashing between all of her like mm. family members dead oh, yeah. in front of her <sighs> they didn't show that in the movie huh no it's in the books but i think that's mine just having to be reminded that yeah i don't know i could just i can just picture my own sisters or my parents or my grandma or dylan and I, so I think that's it. I, I can relate to her complete terror and just can't cope in that moment because she's a powerful witch. She could have cast the spell to to break that moment, but the fear just took over. And I just can't imagine how sad it would be to be forced to see everyone that you love laying there at your feet dead. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I would almost have to re like almost agree. I feel like that would be mine. Or maybe, I don't even know what it would look like. like we're, we're getting real deep in this podcast episode of Harry Potter. Um, I feel like maybe mine, I don't know what it would look like, but just like alone. Mm-hmm. Loneliness, I think. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know how that would manifest, but that'd probably be like what how it would torment me. Like, oh, you're going to be alone. Pitch you're black. like, maybe? I don't know how. That, anyway, <laughs> so this is, this is my greatest fear for everyone listening to this episode. <laughs> I think another but. terrifying moment from that scene is the fact that as she's watching all of her children be dead before her, Fred and George are still together because even in her worst fear, she can't imagine a world where the two of them are not together. Ugh. And that is why I will forever be upset as Miss J.K. Rowling for taking away Fred from me. I mean, even she, I think she admitted in an article that she made a mistake in like killing off like one of the twins. Like she regretted, that was like one of her biggest regrets in doing that. All right. Number five. How would you summon your Patronus? So your Patronus is something that's guaranteed to cheer you up on any terrible day. What would what memory would you use that just brings you like brings you complete joy and happiness? My memory has changed a couple times over the years, but right now it's our trip this past fall to Ireland and Scotland. It's being in Edinburgh again, but this time with Dylan, my husband, because I stand by the fact that out of all the places I've been in the world, Edinburgh is Edinburgh, Scotland is my favorite one I have ever been. Mm -hmm. And going back like six years later and getting to bring your favorite person with you and that's standing true and it's still the best place you've ever been. 
that is my moment of joy. We're riding the train into the city and I can see the skyline and it's just pure magic being back there again. Uh, that sounds great. That sounds so beautiful. Great. I think mine is probably my little boy. I mean, like just his laugh and his <laughs> smile and like whenever he like comes at you full force and like with his arms open or, and he has like these bright eyes and he just wants to like be there with you and he, he wants to like laugh with you and that that's like happy. Mine's probably, you know, there's these moments. So I lead worship um, at church and there's these moments, especially there at worship nights or even in services where every single hand is raised and every single person is just worshiping the Lord. And like, all I can think about is like, this is what heaven's going to be like. And like, honestly, those are like my most, like the most happy, I feel like and joy I ever feel, which is worshiping, which is obviously a very churchy answer, but you know, but it's true. You know, I think for me, um, even get when you're, when you're on the other side, even like leading everyone into worship, I think it's a, it's an honor to do that, you know, to be, be used in that way so i feel like that's probably the memories that i would use to summon my patronus <laughs> <laughs> um so <laughs> number six how would you use the polyjuice potion <laughs> these are great questions these are really good questions i don't know because it's only active for like an hour so i feel like you have to make the most out of it so i'm like what would i do with polyjuice who are you supposed to turn into to do so? I know. I feel like you have to give me a scene where yeah. I'm having to, I don't know, steal some there precious to artifact like, to there, save the yeah, world. Yeah, there has to be some obviously. sort of like mission because you don't just want to turn into like, I don't know, your your husband or something. Like, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. Just it just says like your answer you? here reveals who you dream of becoming and who you crave to be. So like who you want to become. Naturally, your answer also shines a harsh light on your dissatisfaction and insecurities about yourself. That's what this is right here. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Well, mine's obviously that there's not enough intrigue in my life, considering I just told you I need to have some kind of spy scenario <laughs> where I'm saving the world. So I don't know what that says about me. Well, yeah, why does like I feel like I have to like pretend to be someone else so I can save something? And honestly, that's kind of like the mindset you get to. Um, me over here thinking that my worth is contributed by what I can give to other people. I'm like, give me something where I have to accomplish something important. Well, I don't know. I honestly, I don't know. I don't know if I have that question answer i guess yeah or you could always become like a celebrity for a day you oh, know that'd be interesting. see what that life would look like i guess for fun <laughs> you be the queen, just... <laughs> the queen. <laughs> i don't want to be old <laughs> man oh man i, bet that'd be I don't boring. know we're gonna have to come back to that maybe yeah. or maybe just not answer it <laughs> but if you, you guys have an answer leave. let us know um the mystery i think this is probably an obvious question but how would you react if your pure blood child married a muggle born i'd be fine with it i'd be fine with it i would completely love it you don't understand yeah. i ship hermione and draco together so <laughs> badly because i hermione and Drake. well because the character the actors in real life also real had a crush on each other right but not even that i just think because draco as he is obviously i mean He's a multifaceted character, but he is not, he doesn't have a good redemption arc in the series as it is. And so I think that in the world where him and Hermione are together, it's because he experiences growth and maturity and realizing the um, error of the world that he was brought up in and how much of it was a product of the family that he was raised into. And so the idea that he grows past that and just the personal growth it would have to show and then the ramifications it could have in the world with like his like family status supporting her because obviously Hermione Granger is going to go on to like change the ministry and the whole world for like the better of society. So I have strong opinions about yeah. why those two are far yeah, superior like a, together. There was like a video that came out about like the behind the scenes, I guess. And there was like uh, a scene where Harry catches the wand after he falls from Hagrid after pretending to be dead mm -hmm. and it was actually draco that tossed him the wand and it's a it's an actual like clip and they completely cut that out um of there so i don't i don't believe that happens in the book though but i think that's yeah, just them trying just like to remind extra, you yeah it was just like an extra thing but they ended up doing away with it anyways but it was like really cool to see it let's probably talk about the wand ownership theory and as to why that's why harry was technically the master of the elder wand mm -hmm. which is why he was able to defeat voldemort in that moment and so they were trying to probably remind the audience that he took the wand from Draco, but really that happened back at the malfoy manor yeah what was your question again <laughs> i mean it was about the, the pure blood and muggle born but 
Speaking of Draco, though, going into Slytherin House, why did Albus Dumbledore tolerate Slytherin House? Why do we think that? It even says here, you know, appeal to our real world. The question is similarly, like, should we go all out to destroy evil at any cost? Or should we strive for a system that can monitor, restrain, and limit evil? Obviously, in our mind as Christians, it's evil should not have a place. You know, right. it's just one of those things. I don't think but, people are but innately people, good or innately yeah. evil. And in, in I think that, like, Slytherin, like, you, you can't just label, like, one person, like, pure evil just because they're they're in one house exactly. i mean they could be and that's the thing we never see the nicest person a, you've a ever good, met we've never really were introduced to a a good slytherin right you know i feel like they always painted them as bad but yet i've know people who have been placed in the slytherin house and they're great you know so well, like even, well even in the the movies like especially in part two like it was really prevalent like when um uh, one of the girls uh, said, well, there, there's Harry. Grab him. Somebody grab him. And it was just one bad seed out of like all of the all of the Slytherins. Oh, no. But because of that, McGonagall was like, I wish I wish J.K. Rowling did write more of good Slytherins, you know, versus like I feel like every Slytherin we met was not. Snape is, you know, pretty brutal for the most of the movies at the very end you know they tried to do a redemption kind of thing at the end but i was like but you were really mean to everybody well not every house was like actually good because if you think about it in the fourth in the fourth book like they were all making fun of harry like harry's dad bullying him uh, uh, kind of a little bit of a bully right when he was younger gryffindor. and he was gryffindor you're choosing who you're being loyal to because like the slytherins could be argued that to each other they were great friends and they were loyal and they were fierce to protect each other it's just that they were choosing to be that way at the expense of everyone else <laughs> the same way that yeah. i think so many other people would choose to shun others at the sake of their own loved ones so i don't know and i think dumbledore did argue that he thinks that they're sorting people too young just because you see you know extreme bravery shown by severus later on you know being a double agent towards voldemort and that sort of thing and people can always grow and change and i think that's like the important thing that you gather from that it's like I mean, even in the real world, it's a lot like that, too, mm -hmm. you know. So nine, number nine, if you had a time turner and could only use it once, what would you change? I would go back um, on the way to my honeymoon. Me and Dylan stopped and got food poisoning on the way, and it <gasps> ruined the whole trip. And we still talked about how if we could just go back and not eat at that one restaurant and not be terribly sick on our first trip as, oh, as husband and wife, goodness. it would have been a much better week. <laughs> okay, if we're gonna if we're gonna go like the vacation, like the those routes, I'll stick to that too. Um, we recently went on a on a cruise uh, this past year, and it was like my very first one. It wasn't my husband's first one, but I decided I was going to get a massage on the cruise, and I totally regret it. It was like one of the worst massages I've ever had in my life, and like the lady was like, it, it was, it was either she was very painful or like I couldn't even feel her. It was like she was like just poking me. Like at one point, <laughs> and it was like, and then afterward, it was kind of like an advertisement. These are all the products I use. Would you like to buy it? And it was just <gasps> like, yeah. And and then like you're at a part of the ship where you could actually feel like everything like bounce. And so I'm bouncing on the table while, while it's being done. And so it was like really expensive too. And I kind of just regret like, because then afterward, I was kind of like, well, yeah. <laughs> 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 that that was my superficial regret i guess i i don't know if i i don't know what i would use it to be honest like i think i've had now i can't remember anything i know in the moments i always feel like oh I, would just, I just wish i could turn back time this weekend or whatever like little things um goodness i don't know to be quite honest um maybe it would be going back to my younger self and being like, you're going to learn guitar right now. Don't wait till like you're late, like later. That way I can be more proficient in it now. I don't know. Cause I, I started playing acoustic in the fall and I play now, you know, it's, and which is fine. I play for our youth and everything on Wednesday nights, but um, sometimes I wish I could be really proficient in it right now, but it's going to take a while. I'm like, I should have started younger. I don't know. I really can't think of anything else. That's the best I got. Last question here. What objects would you use for your horcruxes? Dark. <laughs> Man. 
This is not my questions. This is just a, I googled great life questions. Assuming we're not going deeper into that where it involves literal murder and I'm just picturing, like picking objects of significance. I felt like it might be... But at least as we're here, I'm not encouraging you to contemplate murder, of course. <laughs> Instead of inviting you to simply consider what you would use if you were to make horcruxes. That's literally what it says. Okay. Then I guess mine, I often think of jewelry just because that's yes. kind of my go-to of like memory significance. Like the ring I'm wearing now is the ring my mom was given on her sweet 16 birthday. Mm-hmm. And so I've got that one and then one from my Nana and Mm-hmm. A necklace that Dylan and I picked out on our trip to Ireland together. So I think of just small things that hold significance, but I like ones that I can wear around on the daily. Yeah, I'd say same. I have a lot of like vintage pieces from my grandparents and just like things like that, like rings and, and necklaces as well. I mean, it's just something simple, something small that you could do. Um, um I feel like I would probably choose... um. A random pop doll. Just kidding. <laughs> just, just Bucky. Just Pedrito as the Mandalorian. You know. <laughs> um, it'd probably be an instrument. Maybe. No, I don't. I don't. I don't really wear jewelry. So that's the. That's the. The hard part. I'm not my dog. <laughs> just Bucky. I mean, Nagini was one. That's true, but Nagini like Bucky's with you forever. everywhere. Well, don't you want that for Bucky? Do they live forever, a Horcrux? I have no idea. We're I going mean, way too deep into the how much does that portion of his soul being put into that item have an effect on like, it? Like, yeah, Nagini I don't really was think that far. pretty old, I feel like. I don't know how long. I don't know. That's- Some people argue that it wasn't a natural snake. It was a witch that had the ability to transform. It was um, when you watch Fantastic Beasts, you that's see just it. just a fan a bit, theory. I know. They did do it in the films. So um, anyway, that's all the fun little mini life questions we had for us for that so um i think what what was y'all's you know reaction to how the books you know carried over to films i thought they did a very 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 good job i mean i think like the was it the fourth one where they did like the the trials and stuff like that it the book was way more detailed did you put your name in the couple of aisles? yes Dumbledore asks yes. calmly. Yeah. <laughs> I think that like it's it's more detailed in the book. Um, oh, yeah. But I think for the time frame that they had and like what they did, I think they did a, a, a really good job of that. I mean, that being said, that's probably one of my least favorite. Yeah. What is your favorite, favorite book that and your least favorite book? I hey. love Prisoner of Azkaban, mm-hmm. but there's something about the very first one. Um, probably the book, the first one. Because I love the whole series, but there's just something about experiencing the world for the first time. And when you get to the chapter Diagon Alley and he, Harry, as an 11 year old child, is like seeing magic and realizing there's a whole other side to this world and yes. his life. That was the moment that I, as a child, felt like, wow, magic is yeah. real. Like, <laughs> And it was just pure childhood joy for yeah. a moment. And so I think that's always going to have a soft spot in my heart. I would say, yes, I would agree with those reasons. Like the first one, uh, if I had to choose a second one, though, as a close, I would say Order of the Phoenix. Order of the Phoenix because they they come of serious. age. Yes, it, it gets that it's that uh, divide point where they're they're no longer children. They they now have to like be say, ready. Teen, teen. Yes. And they now know that, you know them defeating Voldemort is coming really close and they need to prepare themselves. And like, they, they throw away like their childish ways and become those adults and like take on the responsibilities that should be adults doing it, but it's theirs. Yeah. I liked it. I said that when I did it, when I asked this, or when I answered this question, I'll go, I would say prisoner of Azkaban because of the time travel. Um, I absolutely love Sirius Black and I don't know. I'm just a huge Sirius Black fan. Um, but I, I think even the fear of the Dementors when that was introduced, you're like, what is happening right now? Mm-hmm. They're especially the train scene. Yes. Oh man. And then And that chocolate can fix problems. Yeah. Yeah. It's honestly so, a solid truth. And I love I was like, obviously a Twilight fan. Werewolves, what? You know? <laughs> <laughs> His name literally means like wolf wolf. We miss Lupin. <laughs> I know. I love Lupin and um yeah, I, I think that's probably my favorite. Um, least favorite's probably Deathly Hallows. I would say the part one. Mine is Chamber of Secrets. No, part two. Because Lockhart makes me frustrated. Lockhart. 
in the book, so you see him down when they go down to the hospital. Stop. And everything. the Mandungus ward, he's there long term and he's lost his memory and he just signs autographs. It's so sad. I know. But I would give for them to include Neville's parents and like that scene with the bubblegum wrappers that he like saves from his mom. <sighs> Ugh, heartbreaking. Yeah, I know. That's one thing I'm, I'm, I'm curious to this TV series. Yeah, I think I think the movies were pure magic and there's a reason that it's become the f- like international phenomenon that it has just because they did a great job. Were they perfect? Did they include everything? Did they get every character's nuance right? No. Did they like cut things off? Yes, completely understand. But I think they were fantastic and they will always hold a special spot in my like spot in my heart. But I am very hopeful that with a new series that we could see even more or dive deeper. Hermione's like um determination to Spew. save the elves yes. yeah and all that and- i i i agree i think that the details make the make the movies mm-hmm. and things like that i just i i want them to be able to keep the characters as they are and not deviate from the originals just because we fell in love with those characters to begin with mm-hmm. so like different actors yeah sure same same profile same like in in our head as in the books yeah yes i do agree i just want them to follow word for word and just do the entire book yeah or if they add anything it's that they go back to like the marauders era see that is what they should have done they should have done a show about their parents the characters that we all see as them though are too old ben barnes is a grown man he can no longer play serious black (laughs) like maybe it's voldemort's like his whole beginning of it that would be like as a teenager like in detail and man Maybe they will do it. We don't know. I don't know. But um, what do y'all think, you know, as with Harry Potter as Christians, like why we are navigated towards it or just not maybe, maybe not just Christians, just people in general. Why do we navigate towards the world of Harry Potter? I think just because it's it's um it's an escapism. Yeah. So it's like it's it, but it's a fun one and it's one that has like morals and it has values and it has those boundaries that like within it kind of like Lord of the Rings. Like the there's a right, evil. there is a right and there is a wrong and there is little love stories pocketed in and out. And there is just this this extravagant world that's just been made from the ground up from scratch. And it's just like their own languages, their own like animals, their own. It's just beautiful. Mm mm-hmm. Yeah, world building in a way where you can still picture it, even though it's intricate and detailed and different from the world that we're living in. It's similar enough that you can still see it and yeah. envi- envision what it's like. Um, but yeah, I think so much of it just has to come back to like the stories that are told over the span of the books and the growth that you see, but how the side quests and the quests. <laughs> but they're still they're still happy endings. Yeah. You know, I think that plays a big part of it. Is that. So much of the world is negative these days and like the news and the media and everything's on fire and it feels like you can't trust anyone and things are never going to be good again. And so sometimes it's nice to just go to a world where friendship and bravery can conquer the darkest evil in the world. (laughs) And it's interesting how how that whole like wanting to see good versus evil, good conquer evil is. I mean, it's just part of our world as Christians, you know, we're dealing with the supernatural. It's so much you know, good versus evil and, you know, you know, obviously God triumphs all the time and will always win and he has the victory. And I think that's what's so cool about it is that we know as Christians, you know, battles won, you know, he is one. We know how the ending is, you know, in Revelation. And um, and so I think we're always going to be nav. We're all, also always going to be navigated towards seeing how good triumphs that. And so I think that's a lot of this book series when I read it for the first time and I was like, you know, this is the series is really it's seeing how death and the darkness and evil is defeated in such a beautiful way through friendship and through people and through community and, you know, and, and all that. So I don't know. It, it, I think for anyone who is questioning whether or not they should read Harry Potter because of their own reservations, like I think just use your own judgments, whether what your own convictions. And we've talked about this in other episodes. Um, but if you're joining and you've never you know, haven't listened to any of the other episodes. That's kind of what a lot of our main topic in answering a lot of these questions is, you know, you use your own convictions. Like if you feel like in your spirit, you're like, I just, I don't know. I really, I don't know how I feel about watching Harry Potter. I don't know. Like, I mean, it's fine. It's okay. You know, you don't have to watch it. Um, Or maybe you're at that verge, like, you know, is it okay? You know, can I, can my teenager, can my kid watch it? You know? And I think even the books, there's, you grow up with the books. And so, you know, it's interesting how 
the first book versus the last book is really I mean it depends on what age you you should read them I feel like even as a kid I don't know that's just yeah. my opinion but um anyway is there anything else that y'all have wanted to say about Harry Potter or anything like that hot take on Harry Potter anything on it I think my hot take is that I like Draco and Hermione together <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to <laughs> yeah um sweet but we're almost coming up to an hour I'm sure when I edit it it'll be different but um thank you all so much for jumping on this episode i'm sure you'll be back again as we talk about other things um especially when the tv show comes out we're going to review every episode as they come every out single yes. one. um that's the plan for a lot of these episodes and marvel and all that will always um pl- i plan to review each episode we'll see how that goes maybe every two episodes or something like that we'll see we shall see but is there um, anywhere um, people can follow you if you want them to follow you on social media? And if you're like, nah, anything y'all want to let our listeners know about anything you want? Um, yeah, so I'm working on a Etsy shop for yeah. my own thing. Uh, it's called Desi's Digitals. It's for real estate and marketing and things like that for people to do uh, with their own templates to be able to have like professionally designed templates for their work and just to be able to better organize their own life and make it look like they have everything together, even when they don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I'm in the process of uh, creating those and working those and I'll be launching those in the next like coming months. Nice. So yeah. So you can find that on Desiree Manier, D-E-Z-E-R-A-E-M-A-N-I-E-R. On Instagram? Yeah. On Instagram or Facebook. Either yeah. way. I mean, I keep the same name everywhere. <laughs> but that's it what about you, Haley? my socials are fairly private so nothing yeah. too big to share mm-hmm. if you have any book recommendations or Hermione and Draco fan fiction recommendations feel free to reach out yes <laughs> you could uh, reach out to our Instagram Facebook or um, our email as well but sweet awesome well thank again thank again thank y'all again for jumping on this episode I love thank you, you guys. for having us yes it was, it was so fun great. and for everyone else listening we'll see y'all next week hey thank you so much for listening to this episode of the nerds and jesus podcast this podcast is produced edited created and hosted by me mary howell i also run our social media and patreon page and also did our art the music is by john bjork and if you're looking for a way to get connected into the nerds and jesus podcast community you can follow us on social media at nerds and jesus and for more bonus content physical merch and so much more you can visit our patreon page patreon.com slash nerds and jesus you can also become a producer level patreon as a supreme nerd where you will get your name read at the end of every episode as well if you would like to continue to support the show you can share this podcast word of mouth with everyone you know you can also review and rate our episode wherever you get your podcast anything helps and thank you so much for listening to this episode see y'all next week